I have another low carb ketogenic meal I want to share with you today, but this one's going to be a little different than a lot of them I've shown you lately. This one is going to be shelf stable, easy to pack, very lightweight, very easy to put together, and hopefully very tasty. If you're interested, keep watching. So yes, I did say hopefully, because I have not yet made this meal out here in the woods. Now, I've made a lot of meals like this over the years, but they were all pre-keto. So they weren't low-carb variations, but they were all made with things that you likely have around the house even now, or very inexpensive and easy to find in the grocery store. So, you know, all of my meals, that, well, not all of them, but a lot of the meals I've been cooking involves bringing out either fresh or raw foods that have to be cooked, quite a bit of processing to get them ready to to cook and eat you know fun tasty but not always practical sometimes you just want something you can toss in your backpack that you don't have to worry about spoiling you don't have to worry about the weight or the bulk but still provides you all the nutrition you're looking for and uh, is easy to put together and that's what I've come up with. So why don't I take you down to the stump top I'll show you what I have brought with me and then we'll put it together. All right, here is the meal, all packaged up inside of a Ziploc bag. Very small, compact, lightweight. In fact, it only weighs 7.4 ounces or 209 grams. That's everything, including the plastic bags. So let me open it up and show you what I have in it. So this is a Knorr vegetable soup. You can purchase these at least around here in any of the grocery stores. Now, being a vegetable soup, I looked at all the ingredients to see what was in it. It is not truly keto or completely low carb by itself. But, you know, I, there, the things that aren't in it, the stuff that I was looking for, there is a tiny bit of sugar way at the end of the list and a few other things that you normally wouldn't want in a pure, ketogenic meal and if you were to eat the whole package you would blow your daily carbs however I don't plan to eat the whole package the the instructions on the back say a quarter package is a serving size I'm going to actually use half the package so all the calculations I've done for the macros are based on half a package of this nor soup mix so we'll talk more about that in a moment by the way as I get out the second item all the information that I give you now and more will be put in the video description below. Rather than spend a lot of time breaking down all the macros and everything else that go along with this, I'll just talk very briefly about them and then put everything in the video description. So that is the foundation for my meal. Basically, it is going to be a soup, but it doesn't have any protein in it. I needed to add protein. So we can buy these tuna packages in the grocery store here, 16 grams of tuna. This one is ginger lemon sesame tuna and as I look through the back uh, I'm not seeing anything that really uh, deters me from using this there are a few things in here way down the list there is a little bit of sugar mentioned but still the macros on the back on the information are still within the limits that I'm looking for it is more uh, well, I guess it is more protein than anything else, but it does have a good degree of fat in it as well. But the total carbohydrates for this are 1.2 grams for the whole package. I, I'm okay with that. That's, that. that's fine with me. So that's the other primary ingredient. Now, I wanted to put a few things in it. So I put together this little packet, and this packet weighs 26 grams. I put it in here and vacuum sealed it just to keep it fresh and compact and all in one place. This is a mixture of things. I'm using this to add flavor as well as uh, bulk and texture and to give it some thickness to the soup that I end up with. So I, I, it was hard for me to break down exactly how much of ETH each, but there is bone broth, collagen, chia seeds, whey protein, MCT powder, and three cheese powder. So all in all in this little package, and I did my best job to give you the macros for this, but that's going to vary depending on you know, the ratios, the proportions you want to put in it. So hopefully this will work out just fine. We'll see in a few moments time, but still I didn't think it had enough fat in the total meal. And as you know, that's if you're on the ketogenic diet, and you like to go out into the woods, you're always looking for shelf-stable, relatively compact, lightweight sources of fat. And there are a number of things I could have used in this. In fact, I have a couple of extra things in my uh, food bag that I could use. I bring them out on a regular basis. They are olive oil and ghee. 
But for this experiment, as much as anything, I am using coconut oil. So you can see I put some coconut oil in a vacuum seal bag and sealed it up. And it, it's, you know, it stayed together. It's not that hot out that has gone very liquid on me. How well this will mix into the soup as we go along, I'm not so sure. Uh, hopefully it has all the flavor. The whole, whole package has all the flavor I'm looking for. If it does not, I brought my spice kick as, as spice kit as well. Okay, so the next thing obviously is to get something going to boil some water on and just to share with you right now, I'm using my firebox freestyle and I'm using wood pellets in it. I'm not going to talk much about that only because it's going to come under another video. So let me get that fire started and we'll get to cooking this lunch up. So I did mention that I'm using the Firebox Freestyle with wood pellets to cook my lunch with today. And as I mentioned, that'll appear under another video. But uh, wow, I can't tell you how quickly that came to a rolling boil over the wood pellets using my Überleben Titanium Castle for this. Uh, this is actually a bit too hot. The rolling boil is a bit too hot for cooking the soup. It'll do well for rehydrating the soup mix but eventually I'm gonna to wanna to bring it down to a simmer, but I expect that the coals or my pellets will have burnt down enough in a few minutes time that I'll get the simmering heat. So uh, I have to judge putting half of this package in. A little bit more than that. And that's it. So give that a quick stir and I'll tell you what else I'm doing as we wait for this to Start to rehydrate, put the cover back on. So the Norse soup mix has a number of great ingredients, in mostly dehydrated or dried vegetables such as carrots, onions, tomatoes, leeks, cabbage, peas, broccoli, and a few other things I normally wouldn't eat such as uh, soybean, wheat, wheat, salt, yeast extract, a little bit of sugar flavors and things like that. I did mention this isn't truly a ketogenic type of a soup, but the amounts are so small that I don't feel that I'm doing much damage or you know causing much of an issue. Wow, that's boiling hard. Won't take long for those vegetables to rehydrate. So the order I'm doing things in, I have a bit of a sequence. I don't know it necessarily has to go this way. But I wanted to put in my dry ingredients while the heat is at its most. Let them start to rehydrate before I put anything else in. The tuna, of course, of course, is already cooked. It doesn't have to be cooked again. It just needs to be heated up along with the other ingredients so that they combine flavors. The uh, coconut oil, it will melt. In fact, I want to put that in probably last only because I don't want the oil to interfere with the vegetables rehydrating. So that means the next thing I'm likely to put in is my powdered mixture that has all those ingredients in it. Just taking a little taste. Oh my goodness, that's good. I may still have to add a little bit of spice. We'll see. Maybe a little garlic or something because there's nothing wrong with adding garlic to a meal. they're starting to rehydrate. It will take a few minutes time. So I'll come back in a moment or two when it's time to add the next set of ingredients. A few minutes later, my vegetables are looking pretty good, pretty well rehydrated. They will rehydrate a little bit more. So now it goes in my, I guess you would call this my stock, my beef broth or bone broth, sorry, collagen and other ingredients that I mentioned. I did say this was an experiment, so I can't guarantee how well this will turn out, but I'm sure it'll be tasty. I just want it to also come together you, where you would want any good meal and a nice, uh, nice texture format, flavor format. All right, that's actually looking better than I had hoped for. Well, actually, it's as good as I had hoped for. Let's put it that way. Chia seeds are kind of an interesting thing. I started using them in baking recently, and the reason I like chia seeds so far is uh, there's not really a, a lot of flavor to them, but what they do is they, as they rehydrate in, uh, the, in the water, they start to gel up a little bit. So it's a bit like adding gelatin or some other thickener to a soup in that it will help thicken it up. And same thing with baking. I've used them as a binder in baking, and I'll, do, I'll demonstrate in future videos how that can be done. Uh, an alternative to some of the other things you might use for baking. 
that does add flavor, texture. All right, let's get in this bag of tuna. Ooh, that smells good. Sesame seeds in there as well. All right, how are we gonna get this in? Pull the top right off, I guess. So yeah, I know, tuna doesn't seem to go well with a vegetable soup, but I don't see why not. You can put whatever you want in. I feel a little bit deprived here in Canada. There are some things that we cannot get in our grocery stores that I know my American neighbors can get. This is pretty much about the only individual serving size packaged food that we can get. We cannot get Spam individually packaged. We cannot get uh, very, actually very much else individually packaged, but that's okay. I do like tuna, so uh, I'm a fish person and tuna has lots and lots of healthy oils and proteins in it, so I don't feel too deprived. It would be nice to have just a little bit more choice. Well, that's starting to smell wonderful. My wood pellets have gone out and now I'm left with grilling coals, which, boy, there's still a lot of heat down inside there. They'll last for quite a while. I think I'll give it a couple more minutes before I add the coconut oil to it, because I'm still, I'm at a nice simmer. That's exactly where I want to be right now. I'll bring it back when it's time to add the coconut oil. You know, I think cooking with hardwood pellets is an underrated fuel source that people should really consider. No, it's not wood. And, you know, people will say it kind of defeats the purpose of taking a wood stove to the wood, woods. And uh, I'm not wrong. You know, a wood stove is meant for using with wood. But there are days where you just want to get something going really quickly without having to go through all the work of finding and processing dry wood. And that's a key thing. Small wood stove especially really do require a supply of dry wood. You just want something that's easy to get going, provides all the heat you need with little muss, little fuss, and you're good. Carrying along a cup of wood pellets or two cups of wood pellets uh, will go a long way. You know, if you want, you can, if you do have damp wood and you start off with wood pellets, you can always add your damp wood in and there's enough heat to um, dry the wood and then continue the fire long after the pellets would have burnt out. So I'm quite a fan of using wood pellets and that's why I'm making the, the other video at the same time talking about using wood pellets in the firebox freestyle. So uh, it's looking good in there but it's not as thick as I would have liked it to be. So I will tell you a little secret that I have. And I have a little container here and I put a piece of tape on it and said thickener. It is almost all coconut flour with a little bit of xanthan gum mixed through. Uh, xanthan gum by itself is a thickener. Coconut flour is not so much a thickener, but it does absorb a lot of liquid. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this in to thicken it up. Completely optional. But something I've learned that occasionally it helps to have Oh, that worked right away. Okay, now we're into stew thickness. Hopefully I didn't put too much in. I'll tell you, that's a great trick. That made it go from a soup to a stew very quickly, or at least a very thick soup, much thicker than it was a minute ago. So I'll leave the spoon right in right now. I'm gonna throw in the coconut oil. I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished. I expect that a lot of this is going to float on top of the meal. That's not unusual. It's just like adding butter or anything else to a soup. You know, you usually get that gloss of coconut or a gloss of oil on top of the meal. So I expect this will be no different. You know, I think I will add just a little bit of spice, specifically garlic and salt. I did give it a taste a minute ago and it was good. It's just, you know, little garlic and a little bit of sea salt. There's my sea salt. Put that in. Uh, coconut oil mixed through. I still have lots of simmer heat left in those coals, which is great. 
but it's going to take some time for this to cool off to a point that I can eat it anyway. So what I'll do now is just let this thicken up a little bit more, take it off of the heat, put it in my bowl, and uh, we'll go in for the taste test. All right, a quick uh, show of what the soup looks like. It does look more like a soup than a stew. It is thick. As expected, a lot of the oil is floating around on top. The uh, tuna completely pretty much dissolved. There are no chunks of tuna, but there are lots of vegetables, as you can see inside there. That's not entirely true. There is some tuna that didn't go down, break down too far. All right, I wanted to show you what it looks like. Now let me reposition the camera and we'll do the taste test. The wind is picking up out here in the woods today. Started off absolutely beautiful. Well, it still is beautiful. It's just the wind's picking up. What can I say? It's still a spring day, early spring day at that, so I can't expect summertime weather yet. All right, here we go. Smell is good. Hmm. Hopefully it's not so windy that it's causing wind noise on the microphone. I kind of have it sheltered inside of my vest here. Have another taste. Actually, that's actually very, very good. It has a distinct coconut flavor. No surprise from the coconut oil I put in. Had I used ghee or some other oil, I would have less of that flavor. But that flavor actually works well with all the other ingredients here. I don't mind it. My wife doesn't like the coconut taste, but uh, I certainly don't mind it. So I guess that's up to you. You can choose whatever you want to put in this meal to give it the flavors you want. But, uh, you know... Vegetables are all well rehydrated. No reason why they shouldn't be. That's a nor soup for you. Nor soups are meant to cook up nice and well and quickly, and they certainly did. I kind of thought maybe that mixture of broth, chia, whey powder, MCT, what else was in there? There was one other, oh, the three cheese powder would have added thickness to it. It has added flavor and some texture but it didn't thicken it up as much as I thought it might. Now, that's not a bad thing. Again, it's what do you want? What are you looking for in this meal? All right, I'm not disappointed in this at all. It may be not some of the, up to the same level as some of the meals I've prepared out here in the woods, but that's only because this was not meant to be at that same level. This was, as I mentioned earlier, a lightweight, prepackaged meal that was very inexpensive, very easy to go together, would sit in your backpack without taking up a whole lot of room, don't have to worry about it going bad. Yes, the tuna does have a shelf life on it, but it's a lot longer than, than I needed it to be for this, uh, this experiment anyway. Yeah, there are brands that are making ketogenic low-carb meals uh, dehydrated or freeze-dried. I found a few but they are very expensive. I'll be honest, they're very expensive. So that's the reason why I'm trying to come up with my own lightweight meals that I can prepare very inexpensively. And this was intended as a bit of a guide for you, how you can put a few things together and come up with something that's still very tasty, still very nutritious. Yes, there were a few things about the North Soup that didn't meet most people's expectations of a ketogenic meal, but the amounts were so low that the impact that they would have is really minimal. Okay, an experiment that I'll call an, a success, and I would do it again, mix up the ingredients maybe a little bit, but uh, I'll certainly do this again. It's one of those meals I can just leave in the backpack to, for whatever reason, and even if I bring something else to cook, this is here just in case I want it or need it. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below this video. If you have any comments or suggestions for future videos or how I could improve or change this up. As I mentioned, I'll put all the ingredients and the macros for this meal. I'll tell you, it's just over 500 calories, so it's a good lunch. It's not a large meal, but, you know, when you're eating something else, it stacks along the way. It, it gives me all the calories and energy I need to keep moving. All right, so that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.